Okay, so breakfast is done. Sorry if the noise is kind of crazy because the vent right up there is super loud in here. Um, but uh, I'm packing up my gym bag, getting ready to go head over to our new gym in Tyson's Corner. That is going over to Equinox. So it is uh, a pretty sh fancy. Uh, so I'm packing up my gym bag and thought I would kind of show you some of my gym bag essentials. Which of course in Portuguese means essentials. All right, so I've had my Under Armour gym bag here for pff, shit, probably like six years. Uh, it hasn't failed me yet, so I'm just gonna keep it until I blow a hole through it or something. So what I pretty much always have in here, except for non-squat, non-delift days, are gonna be my Romelios. So these are my Romelio 2s that Dear Sweet Booth in got me. Uh, love, love, love them. If you do not have squatting shoes or lifting shoes, I highly recommend you look into something like this or like the Addy Powers. And then also I've got my blue Inzer belt. Now, any of you guys who do not have an Inzer belt, again, like the shoes, it is not super, super necessary, but I'm telling you, once you use it, you'll never go back. And then after that, I pretty much always, no matter what I'm doing, have some mobility options in. So this is like the bully stick uh, or just the stick. It's more or less a very, no, no, it's not for you. It's not for you, go away. This is pretty much just a really intense consolidated foam roller. <laughs> uh, so what you do is you just kind of grab it by either end and you just literally roll whatever muscle is bothering you. I use this a lot for my warm ups. After foam rolling, it's great for hitting kind of like, you know, IT bands, uh, adductors, really anything where it's tricky to get a foam roller in. This works really well. And then this dear sweet thing right here, this mobility. This is just your standard lacrosse ball. I have one of these at work. I keep one with me in my gym bag at all times. It's very good for kind of getting in that deep tissue trigger point work. And after that, got your standard, I use my Bose Sport headphones here. Um, like I said, I had the green ones before, but the mic stopped working, so I get the same ones. These are kind of like waterproof, sweatproof. Uh, shorter cord than the last model, which I kind of like, so you don't have all that jingle jangling dangling all around. And then, got rogue wrist wraps, pretty much always have in there with me because you never know when I'm gonna need them, not just for bench press, but also for keeping my wrist straight during squats, or even really heavy kind of single deadlifts. So there's that, and then, I've got my two, well, hold on, let me switch them out here, they're inside out. I have my two Ray-Ban five millimeter camo knee sleeves, and then I got the same camo elbow sleeve. This really has been helping me a lot with my elbow tendonitis. And so uh, I highly recommend if you have any kind of joint discomfort, elbow pain whatsoever, use that especially on deadlifts, but I honestly use it a lot with squats as well, just to kind of help keep my elbow in check. And then after that, I guess that's about it. I have to sneeze. <coughs> Ooh, yeah, and then after that, I usually will bring my, you know, kind of pre-workout shake, which is basically just plain protein uh, on the way. And then what I've been using lately for my post-workout, which I'll either keep in my gym bag or have when I go to bed on empty stomach, is this Grow Pure from Epibox. It's kind of like a post-workout recovery shake, uh, dietary supplement to support cardiovascular and growth hormone functions and fat metabolism. So uh, basically, it's nothing more than just you know your essential glutamine. Basically, just uh, a lot of great post-workout nutrients here. So you can kind of see a quick glance of what's all in it. Uh, really, really like them. Again, any Epibox product, you go on to epibox.com, use promo code CHASE, gets you 10% off. Currently, everything is 30% off, so you get 40% off, and then free shipping. And there it is, folks. That is uh, pretty much everything I keep in my gym bag with me. 99% of the time, what's in your wallet? Bag. What's in your bag? I'm trying to make a joke. All right, so gym bag is packed, and uh, I'm gonna show you something else real quick that BPI, Sports Supplements, has contacted me. They wanted to send me a little uh, care package of some things to try, so they sent me some stuff to try. So let's take a look at what they sent me and maybe give like their pre-workout and BCAAs a whirl. All right, so what uh, looks like they sent me was a bunch of samples of some stuff. So these are all packets of their best BCAA. So you can see, take a look at that. Now, like, get! They're pretty much all fruit punch. So, so there's fruit punch BCAs. Up next we got the, what is this? All right, so this looks like their pre-workout. So this is called, this is gonna focus, Vortex pre-workout. And then they sent me also some of their vanilla caramel HD whey. So very cool, thank you again BPI. Um, and, ooh, and some swag, we got a t-shirt. We got a t-shirt. So really cool BPI stuff. 
Thanks. I'm all about me some Malta Bridge. So what I'm gonna do, I think, is because the deadlift platform is pretty much tucked away from the rest of the gym, probably gonna set up the baby tripod and get some footage of just the deadlifts and give a whirl of, right now, this new BPI pre-workout. So, here we go. It's a world premiere, here we go. All right, so BPI pre-workout. Ooh, ooh. Tastes just like a snow cone, yeah. So this flavor is called snow cone, so it's pretty much like, I guess if, Ooh, don't focus. I guess if you took a bunch of different flavors of snow cone, mix them all together, and my flavors, I mean strictly color. So the flavors of the snow cone that this is, is blue, red, maybe some yellow, but pretty good. So I'm gonna chug this real quick, and then head in, drop my bag off, and go hit the row for a warm up. Deadlifts is probably one of the exercises that I do where I can go in with the most laid out plan. And depending on how it feels, depending on how it goes, it could totally change. It could be exactly what I thought it was gonna be, or I do way more as far as volume or weight, or I do way less. Auto-regulating, self-regulating, listening to your body is probably the biggest tip I could tell anybody doing anything in the gymnasio. Thanks again, BPI, and I'll see you guys in the gym. So it's going pretty well. I did uh, 315, 315, three sets of five. Then went up to 335 for a set of one. And I'm about to do 365 for another set of one. Now, I used to do 365 three by three, but I'm really starting to feel an arch in my back, so I tailored back down, and I'm trying to just kind of go for smooth, clean repetitions. Slow is smooth. Smooth as fast. Also, this BPI uh, intro workout, this BCA screw crunch, very good. Very clean tasting. Doesn't have like a lot of that chemically taste that a lot of supplements do. So I like it. Whew. Also, one of my go-to songs for heavy lifts and just on my gym playlist on Spotify alone is uh, there we go. Themata by Carnival. Very good pump up jam. And workout done. I did not get up to the sets of singles that I wanted to today. Uh, in my defense, just gonna make some excuses here. The barbell that I wanted to use quickly got snagged up by one of the trainers and his clients. And so the knurling on this one was really far apart and it kind of threw my foot placement off, my hand placement. Uh, pretty much was a wider grip than usual, a wider stance than usual for conventional deadlifts. Um, and then I've only had about less than a thousand calories today. So typically when I do deadlifts, it's um, during the week after work. And so I've had, you know, usually at least 1500 to about 1800 calories. And so a little bit more energy. Excuses aside, had a pretty good workout. Very good. Not crowded at all today. So I uh, kind of just took my time and enjoyed it. So uh, I'm so pissed. One of the big reasons why we chose this gym is because they have really, really nice amenities as far as steam room, shower, supplies, things like that. And I freaking, freaking forgot my change of clothes and my toiletries. So what I think I'm gonna do is get a lock and get a locker here and just always have stuff on deck. So I hope you guys enjoy the footage of the gym. Uh, now that I've got my tripod and nice camera set up, hopefully we got some more of that stuff coming. Need some tunes. What the hell is this nonsense? All uh, right, some of you guys saw there my gym music. I'm a big rock head, big metal head, so. Uh, I know I post a lot of stuff going to like EDM concerts, but I'm pretty much across the board in music taste. So who's this? You got stitched up heart? Yep. This is it. 
Alright guys, so I'm back from the gym. Uh, like I said, May and I switched over to Equinox and Tyson's Corner and our members over there now. now. I still, actually we both still have our Washington Sports Club Clarendon location membership active. That one's only like 20 bucks a month, so if we're feeling really lazy or want to kind of just have a quick walk up workout, uh, the place is maybe about 7-10 minute walk from our apartment here. Really, really like Equinox. It has a lot of other amenities that Washington Sports Club does not, did not, and so it works out really well, like I said, for us to just hit after work because we both work in, well, she works technically in Tyson's and I work very, very close to it in McLean. That's McLean. So I really wanna talk about why I do this, why I work out, what it means to me. Uh, as many of you know, some of you may not if you're new to the channel, I was active duty in the military. I was in the army for six years. I was a Russian linguist. In that field, it, you really don't get picked up for deployments regularly. I was in a strategic unit. I had a couple TDYs that took me a couple places around the world that were very cool. You don't really get deployed to a combat zone on your own. So kind of just feeling the calling, I guess you could say. I volunteered. I volunteered twice to uh, go over to uh, with an attachment unit. Uh, first, I think it was the Sade group. Uh, and then the second one was actually strictly through another agency. So I applied the first time. I didn't get picked up because, uh, well, actually, they did want me, but someone else higher ranking applied after me uh, and they took it so but then about a year later I was getting promoted and I was going through the training process uh, pre-deployment training because I was going to volunteer again for another deployment and in that training I got injured so it was about I don't know we were in, in out in the field for at that point I guess it's several days and I was leading my squad against the opposing force uh, military lingo we call the op 4 and so we were leading an ambush against the enemy playing war games uh, a convoy coming through uh, it's called a sticks lane so basically we we're just out in the field this convoy was coming through the woods and we were hidden and we we're gonna lead an ambush and in kind of the mix of the suddenness of the attack I wound up tearing my left hamstring and really, really tweaked L1, L2 vertebrae in my back. And so I was out of commission for a while, got pulled off of the deployment roster, and got put back onto regular duty too soon. I really, really, really just wanted to do my time overseas. And so a little bit due to my own eagerness and a little bit due to some very, very poor leadership and just getting me back into regular duty too soon, I really, really just snowballed into bigger problems with my hips, wound up re-injuring myself. Long story short, I wound up having reconstructive surgery in both of my hips. I developed what was called femoral acetabular impingement. So basically, you've got your femur that sits up right here in your hip socket, and then here's your hip right here. So mine was basically, instead of having this nice area to just rotate around, uh, mine was just like up, all up in the man pajama. So it was like this. I was in excruciating pain. Uh, a lot of times, I could barely walk. So what they did was, I got transferred to a medical hold unit, and they pop surgically dislocated my hip, my femur. Uh, they actually shaved down the femur head to make it smaller, so it wouldn't be all up in that mamma jamma as much. Cleaned up as much as they could of the arthritis, osteoarthritis, and if that wasn't enough, out two rods in either hip to help keep that femur stable from going back up in there. Uh, they did my right side first. Uh, I was bedridden for a couple weeks. Uh, I and then had a long, long rehab process, crutches, cane for months after the surgery. I pretty much had to learn how to walk again twice. So once my right side healed up to a point to where I could start walking on and put load, bit load bearing on it, uh, they went back and did my left side. So almost about the last year and a half of my six year contract, I was a patient. I was an inpatient for several days after the surgery. Uh, and then my only job, my duty was to just rest, recover, go to my appointments, go to my follow-ups, see my orthopedic surgeon, go to physical therapy and just get better. And then after that, I got medically discharged. After six years active duty, I was honorably discharged under medical conditions, medical retirement. And so I really had to learn a new norm for my body, for myself, for my mind. And that was what led me into studying exercise science. So Virginia was home to me. I was interested in going to VCU. Before I joined the military, I actually wanted to go in for graphic design, but now that I had this injury, several injuries, and I was kind of limited and had to relearn how to be active and stay fit and all this stuff that I was so used to all my life, and especially in the military. Uh, so I studied exercise science, honestly, as a way to learn the body, exercise science, physiology, anatomy, um, nutrition, and in that, uh, through a couple different internships and whatnot, I found a real passion for applying what I had been through, becoming a new version of myself, and then helping other people apply kind of that same mentality. So people who, uh, significant medical conditions, prior injury, 
illness, things like that. Uh, in my job today as a trainer and health coach, I have so many people that come in and tell me, oh, well, I sprained my ankle like six years ago and it hurts. And I'm like, oh yeah, it's cool. Um, you know, it hurts. It sucks, you know, going through injury we have is no fun. Uh, yeah, I've had both of my hips totally reconstructed and I've got pins on either side. So, I mean, that's cool, man. Take care of your ankles. It's never really meant as a way for me to boast or brag, but I think once people learn what I've been through, they see that what they have or what they have been through is not so significant. Really good way for me to break the ice with my clients my patients and so then we can really hit the ground running and apply some things so i've got on either side of my hip uh basically from the top of my iliac crest my hip bone down to midway to my thigh about 12 inch incisions on either side uh and they still bother me today i have good days i have bad days uh i constantly am mo doing mobility stretching deep tissue massage therapy uh there's always been a small chance actually because like i said i re-injured my left one after the surgery a couple weeks after the surgery um, that I need to go back and have my left hip redone. And just knowing the rehab process and how long that takes, I'm just avoiding that at all costs. A, until my orthopedic surgeon, my doctors tell me, hey, you need to do this now or you're gonna be screwing yourself later, uh, or just gets back to the point where I was in so much pain uh, before that I need to go back and redo it. So they've come a long way since the surgeries that I had as far as being as invasive. So hopefully it won't be another year out of commission. But uh, just thought I'd share that with you guys. So whatever reason, whatever passion you have for making yourself better, stronger, faster, leaner, bigger, whatever your personal health, wellness, exercise, fitness goals are, always remember that. Always remember why you started on the path that you are. Don't worry so much about the goals and the paths that others are taking because they started from a different place and they're going to a different destination. Always remember from where you came. Always remember where you're going. Always remember why you started this journey and keep that end goal in mind and set incremental goals for yourself. So it's always good to kind of have a long term, this is when I know I've reached it <laughs> kind of goal, but always set kind of incremental goals along the way. So don't put yourself past your limits, know your limits, and as always, just have fun with it, guys. So. Um, know your body, listen to your body, and uh, just let that be your guide in whatever training path you have. Um, that's going to be a wrap for the gym footage. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, ever forward.